Today on Studio G, the latest scores and standings of the Mountain West Conference. Plus a look at how college students can get extra money on their tax return. And Monica Kranz sits down with DJ War and Peace. Stay right where you are. Studio G starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Crystal McGuerza. And I'm Christina Davies. It's that time of March again for March Madness, and it's happening right here on the UNLV campus for the Mountain West Basketball Championships. Reporter Donald Woods is there at the Thomas & Mack Center with the details. Thanks, so right now we are here in the Thomas & Mack Center for the Mountain West uh, Basketball Championships. Uh, today is day two, and there will be no men's basketball game scheduled. There are women's uh, basketball all day today, and we have no access to the court right now because the teams are currently practicing, but we do have the schedules uh, for today, and I'm going to read those off. At 12 o'clock, probably right now, as of uh, this is airing, Utah State will go against Colorado State. Then at 2.30, Wyoming versus Boise State. 6 p.m., our own UNLV Rebels versus Fresno State. And then at 8.30 p.m., it's San Diego State versus Nevada Reno. So we will keep you updated all through the week uh, as the Mountain West Basketball Tournament is still ongoing. I, myself, reporter Troy Fosgate and Kyle King will have all the details. This is Donald Woods for Studio G. Tonight at 6, our Lady Rebels will be taking on Fresno State. Our Lady Rebels had a win last Friday over longtime rival Nevada Reno, so let's be there to support them. And once here again here at Studio G, we'll be giving you updates with the highlights as well as who will be playing. Okay. However, if you want to see the action live, you can tune in on CBS Sports Network. Also, students might expect some traffic with parking near the Thomas and Mack Center as the tournament progresses this week. UNLV came home with another win after the men's golf team shot a six over par, winning the team title at the Southern Highlands Collegiate Masters. This is one of the toughest fields in college golf. With seven of the top ten ranked teams competing, UNLV will be back in the field this weekend at the National Invitational Tournament in Tucson, Arizona. Congratulations, Rebels. We will be cheering for you. Work, class, studying, they're just some of the things most college students struggle to find time for, and filing taxes is usually not one on the list of concerns, but it can be worth your while. Reporter Zach Fuentes has more. Life as a college student can be demanding, but it also has its perks, some of which can be found in the form of a tax return. But for students like Austin Longworth, filing ends up falling to the bottom of their list. I have yet to file for my taxes. What, what's holding you back? Yeah, just laziness and general procrastination. That's a consensus for many UNLV students. But according to enrolled agent Robert Wagner of Wagner & Associates, the longer students wait to file is the longer they'll wait to collect some pretty good cash. Uh, government says they'll give you $1,500 off your tax bill, and they'll give you another $1,000 in cash back if you haven't already been, a, if you're not a graduate student. So if you don't have your bachelor's degree and you're not going for extra degrees, they're going to give you $2,500 a year to go back to school. That fact alone is enough to make Austin want to file. That's, that's awesome, uh, actually. That's kind of a, a motivator to get it done now. Though some may file before the April 15th deadline, Wagner says a lot of students may avoid it altogether. A lot of times people who are, who are in college and they're, they're working part-time jobs here and there, you know, they say, okay, well, I only made $6,000. It's below the $10,000 requirement. Okay, but you put in $600. And I don't know about you, an extra $600 at the beginning of the year helps out a lot. There's a lot of options for us to do taxes on our own, but if you're a college student, you might have a lot of questions you're unsure about. That's where professionals like Robert come in, but it's important that you find the right one. So how can you find a good tax accountant? One, word of mouth. Referrals from family and friends are a great way to find an accountant you can trust. Two, shop around. Ask questions. Research the agent or organization to make sure they haven't had any prior issues. Three, Avoid big promises. If the professional promises you a big return before looking at your situation, it should be taken as a bad sign. And four, trust your gut. If you feel that that person seems suspicious, it's better to go with someone you feel comfortable with than uneasy. 
For Studio G, I'm Zach Fuentes. If you haven't filed for the last couple of years, you can still collect on income from, from as far back as 2010. Just make sure it's before that April 15th deadline. Governor Brian Sandoval filed for a second term Friday, sitting atop a huge campaign fund and no big name opponents in his rearview mirror. As he laid down three $100 bills to cover his filing fee, the first term Republican ensured media that he plans to continue working to diversify the state's economy and improve education and the state's mental health system. Well, there's, we still have many challenges. We've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. We've added 60,000 jobs in the past three years. Our unemployment has gone from the highest in the country at 14% down to 8.8%. So I want to continue to keep Nevada working. I want to get Nevada learning again, and I want to get Nevada healthy again. Pushing back on speculation that he might run for the U.S. Senate in 2016, Governor Sandoval intends on serving all four years as governor if re-elected and plans to focus on the issues of Nevada first and foremost. Our economy is improving. We've had 36 straight months of job growth. We've had 40 straight months of economic growth. As I mentioned, we've added 60,000 jobs in the past three years, but it's nowhere where we need to be. So I'm going to continue to work hard to maintain a very positive business atmosphere for our businesses and also do everything I can to attract new business in the state so we can keep Nevadans working. Candidate filing continues through March 14. While others have filed for the office, none are well known. Democrats have yet to field a favorite. After the break, Kyle King will update us on today's weather. Stay with us. The name of my show is The Revolution, where you get your fix. What I do is I motivate individuals and I play local artist music and I get people uh, connected to events on campus and in the community. Social revolution that's happening, we want to be able to uh, be a catalyst for that and uh, motivate people. This is Don Conker, The Revolution, KUMV, HD2, 91.5 The Rebel. Collegiate DECA promotes personal and professional development through competitive events, community involvement, and leadership development. I joined DECA because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. So I got to meet people, network, and definitely work on my public speaking. To join DECA, it's a very simple process. You have to pay a $25 membership fee. You can either come to our next meeting, our website, which is unlvdeca.co.vu. We're open to all majors who are interested in business, finance, or hospitality-related fields. Good afternoon, Vegas. This is Kyle King, and I'm here with today's weather. As of right now, we are sitting at 61 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and we actually do have some winds coming in at nine miles per hour. So we just have some minor wind chill coming in today. And our high for today is actually 64 degrees. Uh, we are sitting five degrees, five degrees below our average. We can blame it on some minor wind chill. And our sunrise is actually 646 uh, AM, and our sunset is 12 hours ahead. It's 645 PM. Now for our current weather, uh, we're doing pretty well in Las Vegas right now. It is 61 degrees, partly cloudy skies. A little north in Tonopah, it is 45 degrees. And over in Reno, it's 46 degrees. And speaking of Reno and Las Vegas, did anybody catch the UNR versus uh, the UNLV game? It was not a good look. Hopefully we do better in the Mountain West Championships. And if we go over to Bryce Canyon, it is 36 degrees. It's not really vacation weather in Bryce Canyon National State Park. And there's a bigger explanation to that. Over in the north, uh, we do have a cold front. Uh, it is coming from the Arctic. It's heading into Idaho, uh, Utah, and Colorado. It's bringing in wind chills and rain into those areas. And as we can see in the valley, it is changing our wind pressure. So it is uh, bringing in uh, slight winds into the valley. And if we take a, a global look at this, um, we can see that storm pressure it is coming from the Arctic, uh, heading over there into north above the Rockies. And the, the main pressures uh, today, it's actually uh, coming into the Midwest and uh, they can expect some rain and snow. And now for tomorrow's forecast, pretty much in the south, uh, we are sitting pretty warm, uh, 70s and 60s. However, in the northern part of the country, uh, it is 50s and even 20s. And in, over in the northeast, uh, they can expect some heavy rain and snow. 
And now for our seven day forecast, uh, we are warming up uh, 60s uh, coming into the 70s. And at Tuesday, we will be sitting at 80 degrees. So we are doing pretty well right now. That's all with the weather for today. Back to the desk. There's a case out of New Jersey that almost seems unbelievable. 18-year-old Rachel Canning is suing her parents for financial support, legal fees, and college tuition. Reporter Alvin Loy has students' reactions. Uh, now I am. I think for the most part, teens shouldn't resort to suing their parents for if their parents do things that they don't like. In certain circumstances, I believe that, yeah, there could be a circumstance where a kid could sue their parents. Teenagers suing their parents? A New Jersey teenager is suing her parents to pay for college tuition, and UNLV students were asked what they thought about the case. For me, it seems like this teen is really uh, un ungrateful towards her parents and is going to kind of learn maybe some tough lessons in life that, I mean, when it all comes down to it, our families and our parents will always be there. So it's kind of sad that she's establishing that onset of her being an adult, that kind of relationship with their parents. Paying for college is not something that they believe parents should be solely responsible for. And not every teen that's entering college is going to have, are going to have parents that can actually pay for their education. Doesn't mean you can't pursue your education in this country. I feel like there are a lot of avenues. It's a matter of whether you want to pursue them. You can go part time if you have to, if you have to work and hold down a job. Or you can save up enough money or maybe take out loans. Um, there's a lot of options. but. Just being born and your parents don't really owe you that. That's not really a fair thing to ask of them, especially considering how expensive tuition is. So. Going and turning around and suing them for something that I am, am upset about or I don't agree with just kind of seems like a slap in the face. It just doesn't seem fair or justified when our parents do so much for us and they sacrifice so much. For Studio G, this is Alvin Loy. Judge Peter Bogart denied the request for high school tuition and current living expenses. Canning's parents say Rachel is always welcome to come back home. Another hearing is set for April. Many college students are missing out on money that was set aside just for them. Two million students could have received money from the government, but they didn't even apply. The Pell Grant is worth a maximum of $5,600 this school year. Of those students who were eligible, over one million of them would have received the full amount. This would have been about 27% of UNLV's out-of-state tuition and about 87% of the in-state tuition. So why don't college students apply? A lot of students don't think that they qualify for financial aid. And so to me, there's a real difference between not knowing and not applying. And so there's a lot of students that, I guess, self-select themselves out of scholarship eligibility. Students often think that their income makes them ineligible for the grant. However, their financial need is simply one factor of the equation. The federal Pell Grant also takes into consideration the student's cost of college, the number of students one family has, and whether the student is full-time or part-time. To understand these factors, students need to be more educated and open-minded about financial aid. Use the resources that are provided um, you know, to you. Um, don't fear financial aid. We're, we know we're humans. Um, we have a lot of regulations that we have to follow. For more information about the federal Pell Grant, visit the official website at studentaid.edu.gov. For other scholarship opportunities, also check out UNLV's official financial aid and scholarship website at unlv.edu slash finaid. After the break, Monica Cran talks with DJ Warren Peace. And late, later, Kelby Wilder tells us about cooking classes at UNLV that promote a healthy lifestyle. Stay with us. Low Midweek Show. I specialize in underground local hip hop music as well as your top hits. In the first hour, we play your top hits. Second hour, other local legends that you guys may have never heard of. But I want my listeners to realize that there's more good music than what you hear on the radio. Just Diversify your ears a little bit. I love it with all my heart. It's your boy Miles Lowe from the Miles Lowe Midweek Show. You can check my show out from therebelhd2.com. I'm Christian FGY. Kaylin Hype. And I'm Jay Luna. And we're Ill Vibes here. It's an underground hip hop show here at UNLV where we focus on making the hip hop culture in uh, the Las Vegas Valley more prevalent and just making people more aware of uh, up and coming underground. Basically, we play what we like. Um, it's 
really as simple as that. Uh, most of the stuff we like are our hits, so it's both. On KUND HD2, Las Vegas. Participation in Greek fraternity and sorority life at UNLV can provide an experience like no other. With benefits including supportive friends, leadership and career opportunities, and community service. Um, Greek life at UNLV is really great. It's a good way to network and meet new people from all over the place. We got academics and we're all about that culture. So we encompass everything all around and we're, we're out here and we're trying to better ourselves to try to make it better and let's just make it all better all together. Welcome back from the break. Joining us today is DJ Warren Peace, resident DJ for XS Nightclub, for time winning um, club in the U.S. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So I understand that you had a radio show back in the day here yes. called Word Up. Yes, I had a show a called um, Word Up. It was on KUNV. It was on the top of CSUN, not on top of CSUN, top of the Memorial Student Union. Um, had it for, I, I can't even remember, maybe five, seven years, I can't remember. But I uh, won a couple awards. What kind of awards did you win? Uh, number one rap show in the nation. I ran that, tw uh, won that twice. Uh, music director for the show. I think I won that three times. How did you get that successful with the radio show? Um, I got really involved in radio and music and less involved in studies. So I spent more and more time at the radio station. And uh, I was just really in the music. I've always been in the music. And just really started doing more and more at the radio station and then evolved to my DJing. When did you first get your turntables? Uh, when I was 12. Yeah, That's I got crazy. them really, really early. So uh, what was your first song you remember spinning on your turntables? Uh, Planet Rock, Soul Sonic Force, um, uh, Disco Duck, an old disco song. It was one of my 45s I got. Um, I was always in the I, I, I was collecting records when I was five. Oh my God. I was always in the records, yeah, music. And you were born here? No, no, I was born in um, actually uh, Colorado, Denver, Colorado. No, excuse me, I was born in Seattle, but I lived in Denver, Colorado for a lot of time. And how long have you been a uh, resident DJ for, for Excess? Excess? Uh, I've been there for five years since the day doors opened. Um, I had a really, really good friend of mine, a DJ partner named uh, Dave Fogg. And he told me a new club was opening, they're looking for people. And me and him just had a long talk and we said we kind of want to pr uh, push the format. We want to not do what everyone else is doing because we got to see the club and it's beautiful. I don't know if you've been there or not, but the club was absolutely beautiful. Nothing like Vegas had ever seen. And at that time, me and Dave were doing another radio show on KLUC called Vibrate Radio, which was all underground house music. And I said, dude, we should play this kind of stuff in the club. At that point, no one was really playing house music and then they were playing hip hop and house music. Everyone was kind of playing like oldie, like 80s and, and sticking around there. So we decided, let's do this format that was different from other people because we have this incredible, nice club. So what kind of genre would you say your, your kind of music is? I, I love everything. I, I can probably say the only music I don't really like is country. But if I've listened to it for 15, 20 minutes, I start getting into it. Mm -hmm. But I love, I mean, I listen to old hip hop. Uh, I listen to classical a lot, a lot of classical music, um, alt rock, everything. How does it feel to, to share a stage with big names like Dead Mouse and Laidback Luke? It's, it's amazing. It's really, really, it's fun. Um, it's also, it makes you feel that you've actually picked the right career path especially when these guys are giving you back good feedback, telling you things like, hey, I'm hanging out just to hear you. Um, hey, I like your setup. What are you using here? What, how are you doing this? Like they ask me te technical questions. So it, it really, really feels good to share the stage. And then, you know, the crowd response when they're there and you're playing with them is pretty amazing also. And w what kind of advice would you give to UNLV students that are aspiring to be something like you? Um, I, I said you have to follow your dream. You really just have to follow your dream. And if you want to be a DJ and you see yourself being a DJ, then you have to go that path and take risks. I mean, there was times when, you know, I, I didn't finish UNLV. Uh, I started working at Costco, um, serving hot dogs. I was serving hot, I was serving hot dogs at Costco. And I wanted to do that because it gave me more time to DJ and focus on my music. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank cool. you, DJ Warren Peace, for Thank joining you. us. We'll be back right after this break. We're Combox Radio, and we talk about anything from 
relationships, friendships, family, and school. Yeah. Anything we, like that. We know our show is from the three to four o'clock hour. We want to take that hour to just kind of let anyone, let everyone unwind and just take a break with us. Yeah. Hi, my name is Crystal McGuerza, and my show is called Combox Radio with Crystal May. We are on Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m. Your community's farmer's market. Welcoming. Lively. Friendly. A place where neighbors and friends come together to celebrate their community. With over 50 vendors, organic, sustainable, fresh produce are available just for you. Support and buy local at Fresh 52. Mystery, controversy, and America's favorite pastime. All three are lumped together for this one collector who thought he discovered a find of a lifetime. Reporter Elena Ledbetter brings us the story. <laughs> Babe Ruth is an American icon whose memorabilia is sought after around the world, and collectors then and now will do just about anything to get a piece of his history. I just kind of stumbled on this one because I knew how nice it was. Jim Clemens bought this ball from AuctionZip.com for $1,450 and thought it was the real thing because it came with an authentication from AAU, a company he knew well from the show Pawn Stars. After he got the ball in his hands, he thought he hit the jackpot. This ball potentially could be worth over $50,000, easily. Jim wanted confirmation and flew to New Jersey to meet with James Spence with James Spence Authentication, who's considered an authority on sports memorabilia, and got some bad news. And he said, Jim, um, how much did you pay for the ball? And I told him, he said, well, you paid $1,500 too much. According to JSA, the ball was made after Babe Ruth had died, so it couldn't be real. But not wanting to take one authenticator's opinion, we spoke to Brandon Grumbaum, authenticator for the Baseball Hall of Fame and the author of the book, The History of the Baseball. Immediately, I know that the ball is from 1952. How does Brandon know that? The ink color is an updated ink that didn't take place until the 1950s. And uh, just basically the punch holes, the quality of the leather, the stitching, all show the more modern um, design of the baseball. Before striking out, we needed to go straight to the source, AAU. So we spoke with founder and president, Mark Goldman. It's just an opinion. Goldman believes his authenticator, Drew Max, is... 100% correct. All authenticators are offering their best opinion because none of them were there when the memorabilia was actually signed. In this case, AAU offered Jim a whole refund, which he refused. And now Jim's left with what he believes is a worthless ball. For those who are looking to purchase authentic baseballs or any alleged memorabilia, it's best to do your research ahead of time. Contact two or more different authenticators and ask for their opinions before purchasing the item. Founded in 1969, the Barrick Museum is one of the oldest buildings on the UNLV campus. Reporter Victoria Janae has the inside look at what makes this place so unique. The Barrack Museum is located in the heart of the University of Nevada Las Vegas campus. For more than 40 years, the museum has been a culture gathering place offering a wide range of exhibitations and experiences for you to enjoy. They are committed to offering programming that educates as well as excites, enlightens, and entertains. As a content specialist at the Barrack Museum, Deanna Soul walks me through what makes this art exhibit unique and discusses the museum's Art for Art's Sake exhibit, which is special to the museum. Well, I mean, every art exhibit is unique just because it's got different pieces in it. Um, what makes this one particularly unique, I mean, as far as the Barrack is concerned, is the unusual number of very large and very bright and very beautiful if you like painting. This exhibitation remains this concept in a group of contemporary artists whose art focuses on substantious beauty and visual effects. Works by Mark Chaker, Evie Govia, Ali Smith, as well as a number of artists who have resided or currently reside in Las Vegas, including David Ryan, Tim Bavington, Brian Poirier, Thomas Burke, Yeek, and Jason Atticans. The, the particular way we're going at it in this exhibition is the way of beauty. Um, the way of, of colour, of bright colour, of, of things that are lovely to look at. They invite individuals, families, locals and visitors to come experience the museum. Special arrangements can be made for group tours. I'm Victoria Janae with Studio G. 
Although the Barrick Museum used to be the original gym and basketball court for UNLV, this place now showcases a different kind of talent. For information on hours and exhibits, visit their website at barrickmuseum.unlv.edu. It's hard to imagine the Las Vegas Strip only having just a few casinos, but Dreaming the Skyline exhibit is bringing that to life, showcasing photographs and drawings of the Las Vegas skyline by, architect, by architecture and visual arts students. Located in the Metcalf Gallery of the Richard Tan Alumni Center, it continues until March 14th and is open to the public. Opting for a salad rather than a burger may not always be the easiest decision. But thankfully, a new Healthy Living series has surfaced right here on UNLV's campus. Reporter Kelby Weiler explains. Hi, welcome. Today we're going to be preparing pumpkin coconut veggie curry over um, brown rice. You can also use black rice. I decided to use... You may have heard sayings such as abs are made in the kitchen or your body is a temple. Well, the students at UNLV are learning the importance of those phrases firsthand. Your body uses... Um, different nutrients in order to stay healthy. So we need the right amount of nutrients and we need the right proportions of nutrients in order for our body to function. We use those on a daily basis. So by adding these foods, you're providing your body what it needs to stay healthy and function optimally. Registered dietitian Christina Vergara Alishar not only helps start the nutrition center, but offers classes every week that promote healthy eating and exercise. In her classes, she emphasizes the health benefits associated with proper nutrition and physical activity and how they can play important roles in disease prevention. I helped create all these classes that we offer here and I've been cooking all my life really, um, finding different substitutions to make things healthier. If you're interested in learning how to cook healthy meals but you're not a UNLV student, don't worry. Admission is free and open to students, faculty, and the community. Uh, we have a Facebook so we post all of the recipes that we make for the demos and then we also do other healthy tips. Um, different ways you can make different recipes as well. So for Thanksgiving we had different things with a little bit more of a healthier spin on it. Living a healthy lifestyle is not all about the recipes. One should take into account the quality of their food as well. Sometimes I'll go to farmers markets because I know I'm getting the freshest produce. It's picked, you know, a couple of days before they bring it in. And so it has the most nutrients. Sometimes when you go to a supermarket, you don't know how long it's been on the shelf. So it loses nutrition every day it's on there. Reporting for Studio G, I'm Kelby Weiler. The healthy cooking demos are offered every first and third Tuesday of each month from 12 to 1 at the Rod Lee Bigelow Health Sciences Building. I know every first and third Tuesday where I'll be. Yeah, I already eat healthy, but I can always go and learn new recipes. We will go together yes. then. <laughs> That's all the news we have for you today. I'm Crystal Maguerza. And I'm Christina Davies. Tune in tomorrow for more Studio G. Have a great day, Las Vegas.